One of Central Florida's best theme parks is inconveniently located 90 minutes west of Orlando in Tampa. So if you want to ride some of Florida's biggest, baddest roller coasters, you're going to have to leave Orlando and head west to Tampa. But how can you get there? What are the pros and cons of all the available modes of transport? Hey there, this is Stu from Out and Back Travel. I make videos like this one to help inspire your own theme park adventures. Coming up, what are the options when it comes to getting to Busch Gardens Tampa from Orlando? Busch Gardens Tampa is one of Central Florida's must-visit tourist attractions. The park is an exciting mix of zoo and thrill rides, particularly known for their thrilling collection of roller coasters, including the multi-looping Cumba, the hanging under the track Montu, the vertical dropping Shikra, and their latest Iron Guazi, the fast-paced multi-inversion hybrid coaster. Busch Gardens is part of the same company that operates SeaWorld in Orlando, so quite often when you're looking to purchase tickets to SeaWorld, it's likely that Busch Gardens will get bundled into the ticketing options to give you better value. So you definitely want to trip it and not skip it when it comes to planning your Central Florida trip. We have four options when it comes from getting from the Orlando area to Busch Gardens Tampa. Let's go through each one so we can assess how practical they are and then you can decide which would be the best one for yourself and your own vacation situation. I'll then give my own personal recommendation at the end of the video based on my own experiences. So option one is driving. Driving is the easiest and simplest way. It's quite a straightforward route from the tourist area of Orlando. It's fairly easy. You take Interstate 4 West towards Tampa, leaving at exit 9 to head to Busch Gardens. The journey takes around 1 hour and 30 minutes and is just a hair under 75 miles. And you know you're getting close when you pass Dinosaur World and see the lovely fiberglass dinosaurs at the side of the highway. The pros to driving yourself are of course, it's flexible, you can set off whenever you like and leave whenever you want. The cons of course would be you have to hire a rental car which will come with its own costs and stresses. Option two then is to take a taxi or ride share. So a standard cab fare is coming out at over $260. So I'm going to straight up not recommend using a standard taxi. However, the ride sharing apps have better customer focused pricing. Just a quick look here and we can see the Uber starts from $92. We can get an Uber XL which would take up to six passengers for $115. It's always worth comparing the prices between Lyft and Uber to check which is the best deal. I have got a Lyft back from Busch Gardens to Orlando. From our experience, it did take a couple of attempts to find a driver who was actually willing to drive us back to Orlando, and we paid $130 split between three of us. Of course, it's worth giving your driver a very generous tip as they really are going out of their way. The pros of a ride sharing app are the complete flexibility. You can set your own departure times and also it's going to give you a door-to-door -door service which the transit options won't do as you'll have to get to the bus stops. The cons though, it's obviously a pricey option when compared to the buses available and with the ride sharing apps you're at the mercy of peak or surge pricing so what you expected could become a bit more expensive when you're in the moment. Option three is to use public transport. From the premium outlets at the north end of International Drive or the Kissimmee area, you can catch the Flix bus to Tampa. The bus leaves Orlando around 8 a.m. and arrives in Tampa at 10.35 a.m. So you're probably gonna miss park opening as you're still gonna have to get to the park. You can take the number eight bus which runs hourly or a taxi or a ride share if the bus times aren't syncing up. Incidentally, I have taken a ride share from the bus depot in Tampa to Busch Gardens and it cost around $25. The return bus to Orlando is at 10 p.m. so it's great for staying until the park closes. The bus section to Tampa itself is around £30 return. So the pros of using the bus are you can stay fairly late and it's quite cheap when compared to car rental or ride sharing for smaller groups. The cons are obviously you're arriving much later after opening and you have the stress of having to make the connection, which potentially could be expensive if you have to get a taxi. Or you could find yourself hanging around in the bus station waiting for that next connection to arrive. The fourth option is the Busch Garden Shuttle. 
the Busch Garden Shuttle Express is operated by Mears Transport. It offers a free return trip direct to Busch Gardens for anybody with a valid Busch Gardens ticket. So if you have any kind of ticket or annual pass, you can take the shuttle for free. You have to reserve a seat at least 24 hours for a special website or by calling a number. And I have a video on how to do this, which I'll link in the description below. The shuttle picks up from five locations around Orlando, the easiest of which is probably the Wheeler Icon Park. Just follow the sidewalk between Man and Two Swords and the buses pick up at the rear of the wheel. You'll find an A-frame like this one, which marks the pickup point. Even though you do have to pre-book, from my experience it does seem they wait and see how many people turn up on the day before dispatching the number of buses required. So there's a little bit of queuing and faffing around for the pickup in the morning, although the return journey does depart much more smoothly. Even though this is a free service, of course it is recommended to tip your driver. When I used this service last in October 2022, we arrived around 30 minutes after the park had opened for the day and left Bang On Park closing. This is never guaranteed though and they won't tell you or confirm the return time until you're on the bus in the morning. So you're taking a bit of a gamble there. And people have definitely experienced the bus coming back before the park closes. There doesn't seem to be any consistency with this. Let me know your experiences of the departure and return times in the comments below. So the pros of the Busch Gardens Express are that there's no connections. It's a direct service that's only going to Busch Gardens. So you don't need to worry about having to change buses. And of course, it's free of charge. The cons are that you may have to sacrifice park time arriving after opening and possibly leaving before park closes. Okay, so that's a summary of the four ways you can reach Busch Gardens Tampa from the Orlando area. I've discussed some of the positives and negatives for each of the options. You know your own situation requirements the best when it comes to your vacation and travel. So whichever option is the best suited for your group or makes you the happiest, go for it and that's the right call. It would be a shame to miss out on doing Busch Gardens when you're in Central Florida it is more of a traditional amusement park when you compare it to the likes of Disney and Universal. However, it's well themed and presented much better than your typical Six Flags amusement park. And you're going to get some awesome roller coasters. So personally then, my preferred method of transport is the Busch Garden Shuttle. I don't hire a rental car when I'm in Orlando. Not that I'm adverse to car rental, I love myself an American road trip. And check out some of the other videos on the channel I've done about road trips around America. But I always find with Orlando, it's so tourist friendly. Personally for myself, it's nice not to have the hassle and the extra expense of renting the car. So I always leave it behind in Orlando and just take the transport that's available. There is a slight faff when it comes to getting on that Busch Gardens shuttle in the morning, but this can be easily overlooked as it's a free service. Getting to the park after it has opened for the day or leaving before it closes for the day can be a bit of a sting, especially coming from somebody who likes to rope drop and really maximise my park day. Again, I do think it's worth the compromise as it is a free option. A tip for maximising your Busch Gardens day would be to maybe budget for their quick queue. Even on a quiet day when they operate only one train on the roller coasters, i found in my experience quick queue made all the difference. Being able to be on the next roller coaster car that was leaving the station really helped us to get around the park and feel that we had plenty of goes and everything. So I'd definitely consider it if you're thinking about a trip to Busch Gardens. Although saying that, you can equally do the park without quick queue, and I have visited recently and not used quick queue and still been able to get a go on everything at least once. So that concludes the options and my own recommendations for getting to Busch Gardens Tampa from Orlando. If you found this video helpful and you've got this far, please do leave me a like and consider subscribing as that really helps me out on YouTube, especially against that old algorithm. What's your preferred way to get to Busch Gardens and why? Do let me know in the comments below. And until next time, stay safe on the way out and back.